Everybody. This is Dimensions of the Supernatural. I'm Maureen Grzynski, otherwise known as Witchy, and I'm here with my great co-host, Anthony Simonelli, otherwise known as... Hey, Mr. Forget About It. How you doing tonight? We are here with two great men. You'll probably know them. This is probably the most excited I've been in a really, really long time, and I'm sure that you guys will be as well. We are here with Tom and Tim Conwell. We will be talking all things UFO, UAP, extraterrestrial, outside the limits, dimensions of the supernatural, everything that you can think of. We will be bringing them on right now. Hey guys. How you doing? What's up guys? How you doing? Thank you for being with us. Hmm. Everything. So I'm glad to see you guys. You know, it's been, been a while. Yeah. Well, I seen you last time at the was it Power Unity? Unity. Yeah, yeah, Power Unity. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's the last time I seen you. So what have you been up to? Uh trying to get myself out of trouble. We're working a lot. <laughs> things. Tom's working on his uh audio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look like uh, it's working right. No. It's headphones. That's what it looks like. He might have to. He might have to go into his settings, and um, on um, Streamyard, and set up his um, headphones. I don't his know. Settings on the bottom. Like I didn't have to do that with mine. Yeah. No, it should be automatic for the most part, but if it has a problem. I know sometimes if I use a different microphone, I have to uh, set up my microphone or my headset. Especially he might be on my, he might plug it in and hear it on speakers. If it's on speakers, he won't hear it on uh, his headset. He right. It on headset. Yeah, he, the only problem is the hearing, not the greatest. Okay. So he might be good, I don't know. He's, Hi, not, he's not responding to my messages, so I think he's searching here. Maybe he's mad at you. Of course he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the father's always mad at the son somewhere along the line. I know this. I, I always do something wrong, so no. <laughs> <laughs> well, the last time I seen you, um, the, I mean, I see you down as a, a paranormal investigator, and, uh, and you do UFOs also, sightings. So, how what got you into the uh, and got you into it? So your dad gets in with all. Well, when dad well, uh, dad brought me out to uh, uh, lunch or it was a dinner one day, and he was like, "Well, you know, the team that I'm with, I talked to them, and um, I talked to them about you to you know maybe you know come on on our show or on the team." And I was like, okay, like, <laughs> what are you going to do me now? Mm -hmm. um, and he's like, no, you know, join the team and come investigate. You know, it's something that you're kind of interested with. And I was like, absolutely. You know, it, first thought, you know, spend time with dad, do something different. You know, do some, you know, ghost hunting, see what happens. And then, uh, you know, with the UFO stuff, I seemed like I was always interested in some way because mm -hmm. I um, watching the shows when they were first came out, like the eighties and nineties, you know, ask 20 questions with him, see what's going on. And then when I got into college, that kind of opened my eyes up a little bit because when I went to college, I majored in fine arts. So the drawing, the painting, the sculpting, whatever else, but 
I literally had to, you know, do art history. <coughs> so those art histories kind of like triggered some thoughts and, you know, some questions. And I would, you know, throw off questions with him. And it's, he's like, yeah, it's a possibility, that kind of thing. But I kept looking at these paintings and I'm like, how in the world that they didn't have the technology back then. They didn't know what planes were. How are they in these paintings and, and drawings and stuff like that? How is that actually happening? Mm -hmm. You know, and I just kept questioning certain little small things that I was having. And then, you know, from there, I just kind of went off and he's like, oh, watch this show. Oh, watch this show. You know, Agent Aliens, you know, do this, do that kind of thing. Listen to this. And I just kind of followed his lead. Mm. Yeah, I, that's interesting. So I, I seen that you uh, did something. You at um, Conjuring House, was it recently or not too long ago? It was a year and a half ago, I think it was. Cause I, right, right during the pandemic when I was kind of calming down some. Okay. No, because I'm, I'm asking that because I know that the Conjuring House, I we go there for the paranormal stuff. But they haven't seen sightings there. Really? In the sky. Yeah. That's what I'm questioning. I, I thought you might have went there for that. But they have. Now it's a new thing. It's like people have been seeing sightings in the sky um, of of, a sh of stiffened ships or stuff, you know, mm. in lights and everything. So they were questioning that. And didn't right. they say it could be because of the triangle there? there there's something. Uh -huh. they have, I'm not sure exactly what a triangle but I, I know that they were claiming that there have been sightings there. And um, matter of fact, the one night we went there, it was um, uh, Cody and uh, Centauri. They actually, they're like caretakers there. And they, they actually, they, I think the night before we went, they said there was a sighting the night, that, the night before on a Friday night. Mm -hmm. What's going on there? So I figured maybe you went there all night because you got paranormal, <laughs> you got ghosts then. And uh, aliens, I mean, that's, that's a double for you. Yeah, I, I've i never heard that there's a lot of sightings out there. So I never even thought uh, to actually, you know, sit, go sit and just, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in the in the open field there and, and pay attention. Yeah. Because I, I know mean, a couple of us were thinking about going back out there. So I may have to, you know, set up a camera that one of my good cameras that I have and I uh, and go for there. Yeah, that'd be great. Get ghost ends and, and uh, you know, evidence of alien, you know, something, a ship or something or something in the sky that's unidentified. That'd be that'd be very cool. Yeah, you know, I did that on the same night. I did that the, at the Hintel house. Oh, mm -hmm. man, like four or five years ago. Um, Dan's like, what do, you, what do you want to come out here for? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I'm like, well, I, He's like, you've been here multiple times. I was like, I'm going to sit in the field now. I'm going to look, just watch the sky. He goes, you're not. So I went, well, you say there's always sightings. Why yeah. not? He's like, yeah, you're right. And, you know, I introduced him to the camera that I carry around all the time. And he was like in, you know, cloud nine. So, you know, because <laughs> that camera is like military grade. You can see stars that your naked eye or normal wow. camera can't see. You know, I, I preach the camera because it's just unbelievable. Yeah. I, I try to take pictures of the sky, and um, I have a Sony camera. You know, it's a, it's a nice camera. And, you know, I'm not sure if different lenses or what kind of zooms or, you know. Look into the Zionics camera. Zyox? Zion. Uh, was it S-Y-I-O-N-X, something like that. Yeah. Um, you can go to YouTube. Um, they're more for bunny, uh, boating and fishing. Um, okay. You know, you can, you don't really need an IR light outside. The moon does it all. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they, they push it for boating so much because when you come in and you're using that camera, it's clear as a bell. So you know what's going on. Hunting, you can attach it to your uh, your gun, 
and you can literally shoot your kill. Um, yeah, yeah. And you see it like 100 yards, just, you know, clear as that. Big black. Right. Wow, and it's, it's just an unbelievable camera. Um, Sherry from TAPS introduced me to uh, one of the sales guys. And yeah. me and him started talking, and uh, he basically says, well, if you like the camera, well, you know, go get it. I was like, absolutely, the next morning. Like, sorry, like you, you, you sold me on this thing. <laughs> it sounds interesting. It's a good yeah. camera. It's worth it. I you take know, a close on it too. So, you know, I'm always, a, I'm, I'm a camera person when it comes to investigations more than just equipment. Cause I like to catch it. I feel a camera has, you have the, uh, the EVP and mm -hmm. any, the video. So you got double, double thing. Something moves or something. That's great. Awesome. Yeah. I want to say hello to Todd and Camilla. I say it right. They they we won an investigation the other night, a private investigation, and they brought me a box of cannolis. Oh, oh how can I not forget, forget <laughs> that? Yeah, I said yes. hello to son, Camilla. Did I say it right? Yeah. See. Oh wow! They brought me a cup. I have to thank them for that. That's uh, that, that's uh, the highlight of investigation. A box of cannolis. I bet it was. You know, <laughs> thanks again, guys. You know, but um, uh, Maureen, Maureen, is there any way to contact Tom to tell him to check the settings? I messaged him. I just noticed now. I'm sorry for the barking. I was trying to. Um, that's why I was quiet for a little bit. Um, I noticed that in his block, he has himself muted now, which he didn't before. So I don't know if that's changed anything. He's probably, he's probably cursing up a storm. I can't hear nothing. No, no he seems to be so very quiet. He can hear of his ear, out of the earpiece. So I don't know. He can I hear can that, so he can, you know, talk him through it because that's what I would. Yeah, I'll he might do. have to go in settings and put his. Um, can he, I don't know if he's the screen. What? Was he able to see the whole screen? I think so. I don't, I don't know. I'm not with him. I, I see him, so he must be seeing us the same way. Chris yeah. Allgood said he doesn't know where he is, Anthony. You're contagious. <laughs> it's an ongoing joke, Tim. <laughs> One that shows I said oh. something. I don't know where I am, but I run like this and it's like a, that's going to follow me you're in the twilight zone yeah yeah i'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be dead in my coffin they're going to say do you know where you are <laughs> we'll put a bell on you <laughs> make sure you're, you're alive or something <laughs> like yeah. so should um, i should i call him see if you could okay i'm going to mute myself yeah you know, um well, tim places you go i mean uh known or you just go uh, known for sightings or you just hear oh there might have been a sighting there and you go there or something that you might feel that sighting so you just go randomly to any place that you think it might be i haven't um like gone for a sighting um you know it's it's I'll, I'll look at it and you know people say you know i saw this sighting so i'm like okay you know I may start paying attention if it's, you know, close by to me, but I wouldn't go out uh, to where someone does a sighting only because there's so many different things due to, you know. Hello. You hear us, Tom? Hi, how are you? Okay. Oh, great. You can hear us. Um, so it's like, it's too hard to get people to, you know, start, giving you like i saw this i saw this i saw this and you know i just go out and just sit somewhere sometimes and go and pays attention mm -hmm. uh, but I'll, I'll go out and investigate as much as i can and i'll even with my um, camera that i'll put okay on. um i had to take my headphones off um repeat what you said well, I, I asked I asked him if um, there's any places that he, um, you know, when you go to places to investigate, do you, is it reported to be? Um, I see. Sightings. Um, share okay. your screen. See call participants. 
Turn on. Okay. Mute microphone. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Mute it. <laughs> okay. So she's he's talking to her. Um, okay. I think I just hit mute on the... Um, no, because I still... Tell, tell him it, you have to hit mute, mute on the screen on the bottom. It says mute. Right. I, I think we're being a, <laughs> this, we'll be having an alien attack right now. Probably. They're, they're coming down and they're, they're scrambling us. I don't know. Depends. Where's my marker? <laughs> this is. <laughs> He's never had this problem. No. Yeah. Mute your mic. Mute your mic. Oh. Uh. But anyways, um, I'll sit and, you know, just go from there. Um, the camera that I have, I'll put it on a tripod. Mm -hmm. And I'll go out and, you know, go investigate and come back, switch it in an hour, battery and everything, go back. And I'll just, you know, keep repeating it. Um, uh, see what happens. I mean, is there any specifically, like, uh, you're in the East Coast. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you're in upstate, aren't you, or something like that? Yeah, we're in Albany. You're in Albany. Okay. Yeah. You're a little uh, up further than I am. I'm yeah, in just a little bit. Just a little, a little bit, like uh, what, seven hours, six, mm -hmm. seven hours? Yeah. Um, um, I, I can only hear you, Maureen. Everybody else is not. Because Maureen's um, on the phone. Yeah. Well, let's all call up. Maureen, your mic's mute. We can't hear you, so. I was telling him that if he, if I put my phone on mute, then everyone can now hear him. But the only problem is, is now he can't hear anybody. Oh, that's weird. So if you put your your, your um, phone up to the microphone. No, I could just speaker, I could just mute my phone and put it back. down. You can get a, you can get an echo. Yeah. <laughs> you can't hear anything, Tom? Um, no, J just you. That's all that's really important, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> all right, show's over. I'm done. Show's over. Good Good night. Night. Well, goodbye, Tom. Me and you just go out. Uh, you know, we'll go to a different screen. We'll talk. Okay, so on the on the screen, can you just hit... What about signing here? out sign back in? Yeah, that's a good idea. I mean, that's what I had a fight with. Yeah. So, uh, So, I mean, that's what I, I usually do. Um, okay. There's times that I, when I'm driving around, I have a dash cam. Because mm -hmm. um, the one I kind of saw, it was when I was driving. Oh, really? Yes. So now I think because of the dash cam, they're going to go, yeah, I'm not going to show you, you know. Because <laughs> you're trying to record me now. <laughs> trying to get trying right. to get evidence of us. Yeah, but you know, my father, when he saw his, he was, you know, driving. So it's just kind of unusual that, you know, both of us had something weird happen when we're both driving. Same road, but they're kind of like ten minutes difference between each other on different times. So really, it was it more nights or days or his was, I believe it was night. Mine was early, early morning. So okay, like, let's I was this. really going to work. Was it still dark out? Tom, can you I, hear us? No, I can hear everything now. You can hear oh. us? Awesome. Yes, everything. All right. And Don't I didn't everything. do a thing. <laughs> yeah. I had the same issue when I was trying to sign in. Okay. Got to reboot. Reboot everything. Okay, we're back to business here. It really took 20 minutes. <laughs> but, uh, Tom, we were just talking about um, 
like how on one road that you had your sighting, the same road that Tim had, you had in the morning, you had in the evening, the night was the night before, or it was different days. The different days. Yeah. So um, who's talking about your event? I thought Tim had a sighting on an interstate. He was headed like, to work. Same road to me, but yeah. They're, um, yeah. He was going um, one way and I'm going this way. So yeah. they're two different ways, but close to enough. <laughs> but it was still about maybe 25 minutes away, maybe less than that for me to meet each other. Cool. So, um, Tom, I, you, you got a lot of. I see books and everything in this. How'd you get started? Was your first sighting like triggered something in you to uh, start getting into this? Um, well, it was just the opposite. Um, I um, I was a part of a paranormal team, and I saw a bunch of things that could be considered paranormal sightings, uh, ghosts, in other words, mm -hmm. and. Um, then I started writing about UFOs in a, in a blog. And as I got through the blog, I wrote almost 35 different blogs on um, how we could get there, not how they got here. So um, oh, that's uh, interesting. then all of a sudden, stuff started happening and it was crazy. Like what kind of stuff? Well, um, it started out with dreams, and I had several dreams that were, well, waking dreams, I considered them. They were actually very, very real things that were occurring to me as I was asleep. Um, and uh, then I finished, I, I started writing my first book, I guess uh, coincidental, uh, coincident with this, and uh, um, one of the dreams I had was that I was asked if um, um, if I could join a team of uh, a people doing a CE5, which is a um, like a group meditation, uh, calling in UFOs, and. I, I couldn't get couldn't get out of um, uh, out of here. I was I was busy with a few things, and it was hard to get down to where they were. <clears throat> so uh, one of my dreams was I woke up early in the morning, uh, like my usual three a.m., and um, I heard um, I heard in my head um, groups not needed. Ask. Wow. I don't talk like this. I mean, who the heck was that? Um, groups not needed. Ask. And I thought about it for a while, and I thought, well, maybe they're just somebody's just saying that I don't need to be part of a group. All I have to do is ask. So mm -hmm. I started asking, and um, I asked early in the morning. Um, I, I, I tried it that way. And of course, nothing was happening. And all along this time, I was still writing my first book. <clears throat> so I started asking in the afternoon when I was sitting on my porch looking, looking um, uh, basically north uh, and um, still nothing was going on. Then about this time, I started to finish my book. And just as I was ready to do my very last upload to Amazon saying, um, uh, telling them that the book was ready to go live. That's when I had my first sighting. And I thought it was kind of interesting. Okay, I've been asking all along. And just as I was uploading the book, they, they had a, um, 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 they showed me a bunch of UFOs in the sky. Well, Lo and behold, nothing happened again until I was just done with my second book. And just as I was finishing my second book, I had my second sighting. And the, um, the uh, uh, sighting was pretty profound. I was able to include that in the very front of the book. 
And um, then again, no sightings for a while. Some crazy dreams, but no uh, sightings for a while. And just before the third book, uh, they are here, volume one, two, and three. Um, just before the third book, um, I had my third sighting. And I included that within the book also. I stopped asking because uh, I figured that I got my answer. And um, um, I guess that's the story about that. So many people would like to know, and this is a question that I had asked um, prior to the show. Um, do you feel that any kind of extraterrestrial contact um, coincides or relates or bleeds over to the paranormal? Um, well, I think that the, the extraterrestrials um, and what we, what we think as the paranormal uh, the ghosts um, reside in, within the same dimensional structure. Um, and because they reside in the same dimensional structure, that's where the bleed over comes. And it's very frequent. Once you start believing that um, they're there, then everything comes through. And that's when it gets crazy. So do you believe that they're crossing through a different dimension to get to where we are? Uh, crossing, well, I'm not sure what you mean by crossing through. I think that they are hanging on the edge of our dimension. And um, because I believe in UFOs and ETs and uh, ghosts, I think that they, they, um, they are on a very thin line just on the side of what I can't see. And they can, they can flop over very, very easily. Okay, so that's like that's what I call. Thing. You're here, and then you're here, and that's why we could see them so easily at times, mm -hmm. and not at other times. Yeah, yeah, okay. and they can disappear right in front of our eyes, and they can appear to one person, and the person sitting next to you has no clue that they're there. So, I mean, so when you say dimension, is that like a black hole? That no. time that. Like they could yeah. get out of here quick. Or it's just help. a different form. It's just you yeah, know, yeah. From our yeah, it, it, quickly. It's it's not a black hole. It's a hole. Um, like a think of it. As, think of it as a curtain, and um, on one side of the curtain we cannot see or hear or touch or anything else, mm -hmm. but they can live uh, totally unbeknownst to us. Okay, um, that's like, a good explanation. Like, a like I, I explain to certain people, like think of the old video games. You know that mm -hmm. you know Nintendo. You got the flat side, and then you got the three D side. Then you got the fourth side when you actually turn the body, and you got the fifth side. You go all the way around. And, mm -hmm. You know, most times that you know people are like, oh, you know, video game talk. They work. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's kind of like. <laughs> like deja, like deja vu -y kind of thing, like where if you're living 30 seconds, you know, either backward or forward, and then all of a sudden you're back, kind of like like the quantum leap. Yeah. There's questions about, I, I see yeah. the, the audience also, um, they got those shows about the, the blind frog, was it the blind frog ranch, something like yeah. that? Yes. And yeah. uh, Skinwalker Ranch. Do you think it has anything to do with you know the international you know with ufos or any kind of um you know aliens or anything you okay that's a, that, that's a really big subject here let me let me try to address all of the aspects of, of what you just asked um you dropped the bomb uh, within um within skinwalker uh, i believe that they are dealing with a very very thin veil between what, uh, where we live, the three dimensions or four dimensions, however you want to think about it, where mm -hmm. we live and where they reside, which is probably the fifth, sixth, maybe seventh dimension. 
Um, wow. it's, a, it's a very thin, very thin line. And uh, there, uh, quite often, it um, it uh, uh, flops over. Uh, um, beings can just jump from one to the other. Mm -hmm. I believe that's what the skinwalkers are. Um, then, uh, mm -hmm. um, now, uh, are extraterrestrials there? That's another um, set of a question. Um, I believe that extraterrestrials may not be directly on that ranch. They're probably well up in orbit, um, but they're able to access what's on the ranch and influence it. Yeah, because I mean, I seen the testing, the test they did, and like they go up like 30 miles above the sky, and then with rockets and everything, and lasers and everything's like came to them getting reflected. That's only 30 miles. Do you think yeah. they're the ships are like, um, like invisible, like cloaked? Something's like there. Yeah. I mean, they, they cut water. up a rocket and the thing just, you know, took off in a different direction. Yeah. And then went straight back up. Mm -hmm. they, they even did that with drones. The drones went up and drones, yeah. that, that's all programmed to stay together. And they all went, some of them went out of out of the uh, formation. They And the batteries died. They came back down and they say, yeah. even the helicopter was pushed. Yeah. It, so that's that's yeah. very even, interesting. Even the helicopter, that that's the only thing that I, I can't explain because of, you know, they had literally a GPS mm -hmm. in the sky where, you know, it's tracking them and then it's underground on our feet. Like that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So there's some form of something going on. That's interesting. I, I find a, that show very interesting and I, I kind of watch it because of, you know, different things and, you know, so, I mean, with the um, aliens and spaceships and everything, and Bigfoot and, and uh, spirits, some places have everything, all three. You know, is there, you think there's some sort of connection between, you know, crypt, the cryptics? I, I always say that wrong. Everybody tells me in the audience. Yeah. You know, Cryptids. Or, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I yeah. said. The funny yeah. thing. Yeah, but you yeah. use the C instead of a D. Yeah, well, I'm from Queens, yeah. eh? I, I always okay. use D's. You know, um, you know, they, do you feel there's some something connecting them, something coming from the Earth or from space? or you know, Because a lot of places have both or all three. Do you think any, any of that has any connections? Um, a quick question, a quick answer Yes, I believe there's a, there's a connection. I don't know how close the connection is. Um, some people like to say that uh, Bigfoot is directly controlled by UFOs or people in UFOs, mm -hmm. and uh, they do their bidding for them. I'm not so sure of that. Um, I think they very well may um, reside and come uh, from that other dimension and flop over into ours when ET is around, because I believe that the ET ships are creating disturbances between the veil that is between our dimension and theirs. That's interesting. That's very interesting. You know, and then did they come through? Okay. Because yeah, yeah, I've I heard even certain Bigfoot investigators when they go out in the field, like they would leave um, fruit in a pile. As an offering. Yes. Yeah. And they would they actually have the snow cams around, you know, this area. And the fruit's gone, but they don't catch anything. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there going, how is that possible? You know, exactly. kind of, so and, and they lease and they get something left for them also. So sometimes it's a trade. I know yep. I've seen Yep. And, you know, Rocks and stuff. Fruit, yeah, feathers yep. of um of hawks or whatever feathers and rocks or something or sticks mm -hmm. that are bent a certain way, which I thought was interesting too. Maybe, I mean, uh, I, I think it's hard. I don't know, but you don't no. see a body. You don't no. hear the thumping walking through the grass. Mm -hmm. You know, 
they're just gone. So yep. it's that veil of, you know, what's going on. So so the aliens, so you think they like uh, what kinds of apples or bananas? Which one do you think they like better? And just, <laughs> just throw a snake on your, around your neck and walk around. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> some kind of fresh fruit around and say, hey, I'm here. Yep. <laughs> I, I, I've been told that I'm going to be, you know, B. And I'm like, all right, let's go. And I'm like, no, nope, can't do that now. <laughs> so, Ufi is tossing out information about Amazon, um, the books. Thank you, Ufi, for this. Um, they are here. Eastern U.S. UFOs, Volume 1. Uh, they are here. Central U.S. UFOs, Volume 2. They are here. Western U.S. UFOs. Uh, Amazon Books search Tom Conwell UFO book. Yeah, Thomas Conwell. Thomas Conwell. Yeah, I write under Thomas Conwell. There's, there's all kinds of Tom Conwells there, which is surprising to me. But um, um, I write under Thomas W. Conwell for the most part. Those are just three of my books, and I have three more. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. so the, the blog, um, the Earthquake and UFOs. And the uh, uh, resonance going interstellar, and um, yeah, uh, like you mentioned, earthquakes and UFOs. And the sixth one was the Vis night visitants. Interesting, amazing. All yeah, that, that, that that's a story of all of the um, all of the. Um, um, encounters that I had with um, extraterrestrials over the years, and it's all put into one book, like in a story form. Very cool. I, I could mm -hmm. love to read that, actually. I think I'm going to pick that up for sure. Um, Chris Allgood says, spirits are pure energy and extraterrestrial beings have advanced enough to know how to manipulate energy and connect and exist in the same dimensions as spirits. Yeah. Um, uh, I believe that's how they do it. Um, the spirits, of course, reside in their own dimension and um, they're happy-go-lucky there. But um, the extraterrestrials have found a way to access that. And if I'm not mistaken, they also utilize um, the other dimensions for travel because time doesn't mean anything to them there. And they're able to just go from one place to another and That's interesting. travel quickly. Um, someone else asked, so can they see us always? but we only see them when they flip to our side or dimension. That's a good question. I don't know for certain. Um, until I resided in the uh, fifth or sixth or seventh dimension and was able to look around, I couldn't tell if I was able to see um, the first, second, and third. I, I don't know. No idea. What did you see when you were there? When I was where? Did, did you just say you were you went to In those dimensions? dimensions? If. Oh, if. Okay, I, I yeah, apologize. Yes. Yeah. I was very right. excited to hear that. <laughs> uh, let's see. Both Carmela and I have noticed since we started paranormal investigating, have noticed more <laughs> frequently ear ringing. I have had terrible. I, I mean, I've always had ear ringing, but both sides. Sometimes it's on one, sometimes it's on the other, sometimes it's on both. It's extremely intense, very loud. It's gotten louder. Um, I think a lot of people have had that and more mm -hmm. people are saying that they're getting it to be at the point where it's almost nonstop. Well, that that's the one thing that I would say first, go check your hearing because mm -hmm. I had the same issue I've until, had until I start realizing I was losing my hearing. And unfortunately, I have a hearing aid now. Mine is a hundred percent perfectly fine, and this is like I can hear something from really far. I mean, I do have um, uh, something going on with my senses. It's a uh, it's a fight or flight disorder, mm -hmm. so my senses are really heightened. So I could smell something from really far away. I could hear something from really far away, and then 
I've had ability since I was a little kid, but they really picked up when this began. So that could be part of it. But you know, the other thing I was going to say is, you know, start paying attention your surroundings. <laughs> Think about what's going on. You know, write yourself a journal. Pay attention because uh -huh. you're like my abilities kicked in in later in life. Like small little blips and things were coming about, but I'm thinking they were normal. But when I got older and then start paying attention, then I got investigating. My eyes start lighting up because I start asking 20 questions mm -hmm. and, you know, bothering him with 20 questions. It was like, you need to start writing things down. But then I did that. Then I started asking um, cert certain psychics like five questions in a certain direction. And one of them was about ear ringing because I want to know what their opinion was. And each of those five were all different, but it kind of related to where I wanted to go. So, but then figured out, I'm lo actually losing my hearing too. Oh, that's <laughs> not good. Construction, between construction and drumming in a, in a metal band, my ear's been ringing since forever. Yeah, so yeah. I wouldn't know. Now music is probably good for me. And someone playing yeah. drums in the other room. Okay, <laughs> well, we can sometimes. <laughs> you know? So, I okay. mean, I know my ear's been ringing for years. So, yeah. But it comes to investigating. I, I don't know. I couldn't tell anybody if uh, that was an issue. I guess mm -hmm. some people could be sensitive to it. Yep. Um, That's what I heard too. Yeah. Um, let me let me just throw out something else as a as a possibility. Um, um, I have heard people um, say to me that um, when they get ringing in their ears, and it's not very often, but when they do, um, they're receiving a download from an extraterrestrial race. Why? Wow. I. I, I don't know yes. if that's true. Um, when I get downloads, I get them at night and I'm not aware of them. So I, sometimes I think that depending on what it sounds like, it could be that because one day I was, you know, just walking around in my house. I went to take a shower. I took my shower and all of a sudden it felt like I had all the answers to everything. Like <laughs> Okay. Not like I was a know-it-all, but it just seemed like, oh, that makes total sense now. You know, like one of those things. Like and then, soap and shampoo? What's that? <laughs> you said you were in a shower, and you said you know everything. I said, like, yeah, like how to use soap and shampoo? Like lather, rinse, repeat? No, it was more, it was more like um, all of a sudden, like everything kind of made sense, and then it kind of wiped away. It yes. was yeah. that, like... Flip, like like minuscule second of oh okay so I have all those answers and then they took it away for you know it, it was gone and, and that's what will happen with downloads um, mm -hmm. you'll receive a lot of them and um, you won't be able to recall the information until they want you to recall the information right. and then all of a sudden you will be all knowing and be able to help them. And that's mm -hmm. the intent. And it's weird because sometimes you'll open your mouth and all of this stuff will come out and you'll be yeah. like, how the hell do I know that? Or yeah. where did yeah. that come from? Because that's not something I've ever learned in my entire life and you can't mm -hmm. ever repeat it again or you'll never know it again. That, I get that sometimes when uh, uh, someone starts asking me a question, I start tuning into them and I start spurting out stuff and I'm going, how do I know this stuff? Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at their face and they're like, like, how do you know that? Like, oh. I, I can so it's like, okay, so my abilities kicked in for five minutes and I won't see them for the next three hours or, you know. And you're like, bye bye, time for dinner. You know, like, <laughs> it's really weird. It's yeah. very weird. Mm -hmm. Um, Chris Allgood says, if we can cloak, why wouldn't we believe that aliens have advanced technology to do the same? I agree with that. They're higher, they're you know, much more advanced than we would be. Yeah. Um, you, you figure that in the past 150, 200 years, we've gone from horse and carriage to space travel. What are we going to do in the next 200, in the next thousand, yeah. in the next 
100,000. We're going to be so far beyond what we are now. Um, what what we'll uh, uh, compare ourselves to will be something that we can only even imagine. Yeah. Right. And um, there's no reason to think that they aren't able to uh, to do all of the things that maybe you kind of wish you could. The technology that we know from, you know, like you said, we went from horse and carriage to cars and, and spaceships, you know, flying the sky and stuff. A hundred years ago, nobody even thought about stuff. Well, they did. I guess the Wright brothers started in the 1800s. But I'm just saying they never really thought about that. So do you feel that the early technology started helping us, throwing hints at us, maybe with the ring in the ear, giving us some information to start going forward into what we are now from 100 years ago? Do you think they so, helped us? Are you asking if they influenced us or yeah. if we use their technology to figure it out? I think um, influenced us more. I yeah. Think. Okay. Um, I think they're, that's both true. Um, I think they were able to get to some people who were um, who were open to them. And they got a whole lot of their information across. Mm -hmm. And then for some of the other people, they were able to, um, to um, um, give them some clues so that they could go into the crash craft and figure it out better. So they, they've been trying to influence us based on the, the craft and um, – uh, getting a few of us who are um, attuned to them. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's because we came a long way in a hundred years. Oh, yeah. You know, right into computers mm -hmm. and the technology we have today. Look, our cell, we, we, we're carrying a computer on our side now. Yep. You know? Oh, yeah. Which we never thought of even, look, we were talking on, on a computer, you know, back and forth, face to face. Mm -hmm. You know, we never thought we'd be doing stuff like that. So and they were I doing ones and zeros. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as soon as we realized how to sub-miniaturize things, then we're able to uh, make them smaller and put them into something that, like you said, is handheld. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's and, and, and multiple things on that one handheld thing. You got you got computers. You got the cell. You got your phone communication. You got pictures. You can hold information on it from something else. It's it's wild how we came such a long way, and that's uh, what yeah. in the eighties, pretty much when they started the cell phones. Uh, you know, they started back then. It's too expensive. I think it was the seventies, but when it yeah, came, to it, yeah, <laughs> I mean, remember those big phones with the suitcase, and you yeah. had to take it out of the suitcase and talk. Yeah. And I, I had my cousin that had and that. the first portable. It was like about that size too. Yeah, you look really classy walking around with that briefcase. Yeah, um, portable was like one big brick. Yeah. Think of, think about the Jetsons though. Look at all the advanced things that they had, and nothing has come of that. You you don't stand on a conveyor belt to have you know to be hosed off and go through the shower and then have your hair blown dry and then the conveyor belt gets you all dressed and then you go and you sit down and then your cereal comes out. Like none of those things yeah. have happened. And all those ideas were in there. Someone had those ideas such a long time ago and none of it has come to fruition. So yeah. we have, you know, we had the horse and buggy and now we have a vehicle within all, you know, a short amount of time, which I think it's a short amount of time really there were so many things to have been worked out and we had, you know, the telephone where you had to crank it and now we have a cell phone. So where's my cereal on the conveyor belt? It's still in the shop. I'm yeah. waiting. <laughs> it's broken. <laughs> Japan didn't make it's it. There. <laughs> you know, COVID it's a, took it over and they need the parts now. Yeah. <laughs> the parts will be in the bowl, I'm sure, when it gets here. <laughs> Um, uh, let's see. We have lots. Of, we have lots and lots of questions and comments. Uh, being sensitive to spiritual energy, I believe it is related to the energy fields being generated. That could be the thing about the ears. 
Similar to the buzz noise you hear in your power lines, correct? Uh, you were a Christian, I heard a lot of that stuff, especially high, the high, um, the plants, the electrical plants. Yep. And you go in there and you can hear just the high, the the, the high, the power, <laughs> the and then especially the range, you see sparking and everything, you know, mm -hmm. rocking from each each one of the uh, the lines. But yeah. Yep. So it's like the noise that you hear when um like a, a an electrical appliance is around that like humming buzzing noise but really loud well it's um, like when you get shocked <laughs> it's, let's hope no one has to <laughs> um, well, yeah, you can be an electrician that's a hazard so uvi says tom and Tim, what are your thoughts regarding the statement, we carry our own demons within us? Is this just a metaphor for it's hard to go against one's internal biological programming? I would say, yeah. I mean, there's you make your plot in your life. The, the way that I it's been put to me and there's only a few psychics that actually describe this to me and I, I will take this to my grave. So the point of when you're born, you're, you have a discussion with God, who, what, where, and how are you going to die? Okay. And you go in life, you take your, you take your direction of what you decide before you're born, where to go and how to go. If you want re your abilities kick in at a certain time, don't want your abilities, whatever the case would be, you know, and what your life goals are. But when you take that wrong turn, that's when you, your direction is changed. You know, robbing a bank, killing someone, um, where you should have been a teacher, but you somehow became a accountant. You know, that, that's a full change. Your bearer is going to be coming with you no matter what and then it's coming with people that you hang around with or you associate with or you know the juju that you bring into and you know and you hang on to you're going to carry that until you want to go back to your path that you should have been on and only that you would know that no one can help you or guide you so it's your direction of where you want to go to your life. So the psychics, you know, forced me to think, you know, you're, you're going to be born this, you're going to die this way, but you won't know. But if you really look into your Akashi records and let that psychic give you some kind of direction they can't tell you what it is. You have to take that for your own direction. So they can say, you know, you should kind of be this when they're not going to tell you, you should be a doctor, mm -hmm. you know, straight mm -hmm. up. They're not going to say, oh, you should be a math teacher. You know, they're not going to tell you straight up. You know, they're not going to tell you how are you going to die? Because they, what I've been told, you, they can't do that to you. Because that's going to change your whole life. They can give you, well, you kind of should have done something this way. But it's your direction. This is what you should have took. They, they can't tell you that. So I'll agree with all of that, except for I don't believe that it, it's God that we go in front of. I think that it's a council of angels, archangels. And I think that we choose everything, our name, our parents, you know, where we start, where we finish, um, our spirit guides, all of it. I think that we, um, we are in charge of everything, even down to, you know, the difficult parts and what our yeah. journey is going to be and, and why we've chosen that and, you know, how it's going to go off. I, I think that's straight up exactly what you just said except that it's not god it's um it's so yeah it's but it's a, it's a, most like it's, 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 it's a higher power 
Yeah. But if that's true, how come I picked up two poor parents? I can't because I, was I was had a choice. Parents. I got somebody that had some kind of money in their pocket. No, I picked up two <laughs> poor guys that I have to work my ass off. My whole yeah, but look how you, you how you've grown and changed for yourself. You needed to learn a lesson. So part yeah. of that was your lesson. What's my lesson? And, you know, there's, you know, they say they, there's nine eyes for a cat. There's lives for a human that you might go from one life to another that you have to uh, grow from and you have to learn from to mm -hmm. actually complete your path. Absolutely. Well, and I'm all still I know, trying to that. Trust me. All I, all I know is born bald and fat and I die bald and fat. <laughs> no, you're not fat. You're still bald, though. <laughs> well, next time <laughs> around, I'm to, I got to put some more weight on again. New Jersey, I'm bringing like six packs of a cannoli for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. Let's see. Very funny. All good. I like that. Uh, yeah, okay, so wait. What, what was also, the reason? I've also the learned if mm -hmm. you think you have abilities, talk to every psychic and pick and choose what you think is right. Because I, every psychic is going to say something different. What you have to read into it to figure out what goes with you. I always when tell people psychics, um, you if you go to a psychic, yes, yeah. make sure they're believable too. Yeah, because some of them are yeah. like you know black ball. Mm -hmm. Is this true? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Maureen, you froze up. Maureen, look at her. No frozen there. <laughs> Oh, big question. Yeah. So, Tom. Okay. Here we go. I see. Yeah. I, I, the map that you guys, you have, I see that map with all the different locations of sightings. Yep. What state do you think in the United States has more sightings? Is there any particular state? California. Like California. Mm hmm. As far as statewide goes, it's California. As far as citywide goes, it's Phoenix. Really? Yep. Is there any particular reason you think something that's coming down from uh, maybe some kind of solar things? From uh, no. Um, um, I think there's a whole series of reasons why things are being seen in the sky in certain places um, and those reasons can vary from uh, anything from uh, um, they're looking carefully at the pollution that we have in our skies okay. to they're looking at um, our nuclear plants to our military to um, our water resources to it, it really depends on what they want to see, I think they want to know everything about us. So they look at everything. And you see, you're going to see these, these, um, these uh, ships um, across the entire world in all kinds of different places. <clears throat> and one won't apply to the other. They're just there. And um, Do you think I think the only... The only time that there is a um, one major reason is that um, um, as as a race of peoples, we are um, ascending. We are getting um, into a higher realm as a, as a race. Um, it, it's taking a we're taking our time doing it, but that is what's happening. And they are visiting us regularly, trying to judge where we are in this range, um, in this, uh, this um, uh, ramping up of our, our skills. And as they, as they get to a certain point, that's the point at which they will probably say, okay, they're ready for us now. But they have to judge that. And the only way they can judge it is by, um, well, flying over 
and mm -hmm. um, uh, reading minds and 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 uh, reading our abilities, um, and then um, then they can know where we are, uh, where we stand as a planet. Do you think they're utilizing somewhere like the power plant, the um, the nuclear active stuff, or at the water plants? Maybe they're using our water. Maybe they got to drink too. Or do you feel that they're utilizing some of the uh, elements from the Earth to like power their ships or just survive? I'm sure that they have to use some water um, because, as far as I'm concerned, they um, everybody needs water for something. Mm -hmm. um, and they are utilizing it for that. Um, they may very well be occasionally um, dipping into our resources and uh, getting out certain chemicals to uh, support their life. I wouldn't be surprised. But they're not going to do a whole lot of that in particular because they don't want to have to deal with our nonsense. They don't want to have to deal with us coming up upon them and um, uh, having to um, uh, having to explain themselves or um, hide themselves. They, they just aren't going to do that. If they want resources, they can get resources from uh, the asteroids. They can get resources from other planets. Uh, there's, there's loads of water on the moon. Well, why don't they just get it off the moon? Of course, it's going to be frozen solid, but... Yeah. How hard would that out. be to 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 melt and then utilize? Yeah. Uh, so they wouldn't mess with us too much because it's too much of we we as a uh, as a race of people are too much of a pain in the ass for them. Yeah, we're a pain in the ass to each other. Yeah, and that too. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone else. Right. just driving oh, the highway, just yeah. driving the highway on a, yeah. a busy road. You know how much a pain in the ass we could be to each other. Yep. <laughs> you know? yep. You know, uh, how about the ships that they see in, that come out of the ocean? Now, that's interesting. <clears throat> um, I've always thought that the ships that go into the water have to go there for a reason. Now, is there a, a base um, under, uh, water. under the water at uh, one of the deep spots um, in uh, 75 different places um, across the world. Well, that's not logical to me, especially since they can go from the um, sea level up into space and travel at 18,000 miles an hour uh, in, in an orbit and in an hour and a half be on the other side of the Earth. Well, less than that. Uh, 45 minutes be on the other side of the earth. So why would they need to have bases all over the place? I think the reason that they're going into the water <clears throat> is these ships are very, very high powered. And one of the one of the byproducts of creation of power within a ship um, is that it produces heat. So I think what they're doing is they're going into the ocean and dissipating heat. Okay. And then flying yeah. around. And they can fly around for some, some fixed period of time, but then they have to go back in the water again. And that's why you see them occasionally going into lakes. It's not because there's a, a base at the bottom of every lake. You know, that again, that's just not logical. However, getting into the water dissipating heat and then when they get up over the water they can travel 20,000 miles an hour and it won't take them very long to get wow. from one place to another That's something. so it's almost yeah. like when you're using a laptop for so long and it gets too hot it has to let out some of that heat so they have like the cooling things so they're just going to go under the water for a short amount of time to cool down and then take off again that's my opinion and again it's only an opinion Mm -hmm. Because I mean, with the technology, I think they can make radiators for for the car for the the ship, like we would have in our cars. But I guess with those kind of speeds, uh, uh, could be um, those kind of speeds. Maybe they can't. 
you know. But they don't. They a lot don't of friction on the ship. Yeah, but they don't access our air like our ships access the air. Mm -hmm. They're in a bubble and they travel in the bubble and they oh. aren't even affected by our air. Oh, okay. Do you, do you think they could breathe out air or so they got tanks with their, their sort of whatever they breathe, you know, yes. carbon monoxide, whatever they, yes. they might breathe? Yes. Um, and that that's goes across the board for absolutely every um, every uh, uh, race that's out there. And there's lots of races that are um, that are represented around the earth in various regards. Some have massive uh, fleets of ships. Others, there may just be one or two or three or five representatives, but there's probably hundreds of races represented around the earth. Wow. And we can't see them nope. as a race. They don't want us to. That's something. Because I know if they're going going that fast with a ship, our eyes are not going to catch that speed, those speeds. Correct. You know, I even, you know, any yeah, kind absolutely. of any kind of things that we might take pictures with, you know, like that no well they just release some stuff that the Air Force you know they're taking pictures of uh, of ships um, um, from the planes, and mm -hmm. those things once they started, they got they got them, and then also when they shot took off, they couldn't see them no more. And that's 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 technology that's from the government, yeah. and that's you know they probably catch some of it, but they're not going to catch all that speed. Yep. So no, speed they're not. We can't catch with, with any they... kind of physical thing of seeing it. Yeah, well, uh, we don't have. We don't have the technology to follow them. Mm -hmm. In other words, if if let's say you're looking through a camera and you can see a ship out there, all right, and the ship is here, and all of a sudden it takes off at a fast speed, we can't follow it um, mm -hmm. with our cameras. We just can't do it. No so a lot of a lot of times our cameras are attached to our crafts, like uh, planes, and the best a plane can do is go up and fly around and then rotate slightly to the side. Well, by then, it may be a 1,000 miles away. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. That's very, uh, Tim, you about to say something about that? No, I, I was just kind of agreeing with what he was saying. Yeah. We just don't have the speed for it. There's no, you know, our planes, we don't have a quick 90-degree angle that they can. Mm -hmm. So they turn, they're gone, you know, kind of thing. It's interesting how they they um, they're starting to release some of the technology. Some the government's starting to release some of the stuff that um, that's caught through the years of of, yeah. uh, of ships and uh, you know spaceships that are coming through mm -hmm. or UFOs, what they want to call them nowadays. You know, so yeah. that's that's to me. I'm finding it interesting that it's coming out more now, and people are starting to report it. And no, another thing is. People see stuff more now and record it because, like I said before, we got our cell phones. They got pictures. The, the people, only problem is with that you have to really break it down because mm -hmm. there's people that would say, "Where's my phone?" Yep, I saw something. Can you see it? Yep, yep. I yep. And, and I'm sitting there going, "Fake, fake, fake, yeah." And yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would watch these vi videos for three or four days. And I'm like, all right, I'm done. And I'll just write fake. And I'll let it explode. Mm -hmm. And I'll wait for this one person to go, Tim, what do you know? Well, <laughs> let me tell you something. <laughs> and I'm like, this is common sense. Yeah. How hard is it to hold your phone like this? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm you get that with the paranormal. <laughs> well, when we do investigations, how many people go, hey, look what I got. And you look at it, it's oh, like, that's a different. That's thing. a lens flare. That's that's some. That's you know, that's nothing. That's a candle that's flickering in the background. Yeah. That's making that image. Everybody on the wall. wants to prove something. Everybody wants to prove that they have evidence right. of something. I've had people send me a video. Go, Tim, look at this, and I'm like, oh god. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> the same thing how nice can I really be? I'm like, nope, sorry, can't do it. <laughs> Because 
like I'm a graphic background. So okay. I had to deal with the pixelation. I had to deal with understanding what blurb is and mm -hmm. you know zooming in what the really pixelation really is going to do with you know a photo or a video and stuff like that. So I learned all that. So someone say, Oh, take a look at this photo. I'm going, <laughs> <laughs> this could be a good 20 minute laugh for me. Like and I would just blow it, you know, just not tell them my background. I'll just give them, you know. 20 examples of what I see. Mm -hmm. And they're like, don't you see it? And I went, okay. No, I don't see it. What do you see? Mm -hmm. And they try to give me, you know, you have to believe me kind of scenario. I'm going, mm -hmm. okay, let me tell you what I see now. This is coming from a graphic, you know, background and, you know, from video and editing and, and graphics. And let, let me, they're like, Okay, because they're looking at me like, who are you now? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you got pixelation. Do you see a little square here? Do you see a little square here? Why is these two different colors? Why is this one sharper than the other one? Why is this, you know, this one? And they're like, oh. And I'm going, so did I blow you yet or should I go you more? Because <laughs> now I'm going to destroy you after that. <laughs> it's a, yeah. I, I love that. And, and then it, the best part is they show you the picture. Then you tell them your opinion about the picture that you don't think it's real or whatever. And then they like. argue. Then they yeah. turn around and say, "But who are you? Yep. If I'm not nobody. Why are you show me the picture?" <laughs> yep. I, yeah. had a, I had Why a guy. Show me the picture in the first place. Why That's is my a good opinion? One. I had a guy come to me after Dad did a talk in uh, Pine Bush, and he comes up. He goes, "Oh, I got to show you this picture," and I'm going, "Okay." And I'm looking at him. I'm going. He's like, just, just, just. I'm like, all right. So I looked at it. He shows me a flip phone photo. Flip phone. Flip phone. Okay. Well, there's a new flip phone though. No, this was oh, old. Okay. This was <laughs> old. By those old razors. <laughs> and you know, I've already had you know my iPhone already. So this is, this phone is probably at least almost 10, 15 years old. So right off the bat, I'm like. What do you want me to look at? He goes, well, do you see what I see here? I'm going, I don't know. What do you see? And he kept pushing at me. I'm going, okay, do you want me to show you what I see? Clip. Here you go. He goes, what do you mean? I went, dude, your picture's blurry. I don't really see anything. I see it maybe a screen, maybe a leaf. Well, your picture's so bad. And the picture you're showing me is what? Two and a half by two and a half? How, how can I really see what you see? Mm -hmm. He goes, well, what do you mean? I'm like, well, picture's a piece of shit. Here you go. <laughs> go show someone else. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and he's kept fighting with me. And I literally had um, one of our friends grab my shoulder, and he's saying, all right, it's time to go, Tim. Let's go. Like, literally grab my shoulder and yank me away. And I'm like... Thank you. That's all I wanted to do. Like, someone pulled me away because this was like, if you saw this, you would have probably thrown it in the trash. If yeah. the trash game was close to me, I would have done that myself. I go, mean, you go, you try to explain to them what, why, how come, you know, the reasons. And you try to, like, Chris, I see all good, said you ed educate them. Sometimes you do try to educate the people, and then they, they still, they, I've been unfriended and, and on Facebook about things like this and people getting nasty with me saying, oh, you know, it's always about you. You get the best evidence. I can get nothing. You, I never get it. It's just nothing there. And like yeah. I said, I, I could tell you, it's a freaking it's the light. I had this girl send me something, this woman, and it was a, a daughter and somebody else, and it was a big and a big thing in the corner of the screen. And they go, look, there's an orb. And I'm looking at it. It's a flash picture at a wedding. And you can see her earring. She had diamond earrings on. So the flash must have caught that earring yes. right. Yep. And through the lens flare back. And she's telling me it's an orb. The woman's arguing me. I'm, I'm telling you for like, and no, no, you don't understand. This is this, is this, this is this. This is the grand, grandmother. She came to the wedding. And then it gets to a point like, okay. You win. All right. Done. Yeah, it must be. Okay. I, I did a test. Hard time. I, I've been through that. I, I did a test with, um, well, I was taking uh, uh, pictures for dad for something. 
uh, an advertisement for one of his uh, libraries or the new poster that we're, I was trying to play with. And I, I did one of those movement of the cameras and the picture still took and had lines all over it and stuff like that. And I'm like, how devilish can I really be right now? <laughs> and I showed him his pic the picture and I think he said something like, don't put it up. Like he knew what I was, you know, going for. I put it up. No one said a word. Besides, maybe a few people going, Tim, that's lens for it. That's Tim. That I'm going, and I'm slangly messaging them. I'm going, yes, I know, but I want to see if I can catch a fight. And they're like, why? I like, I want to prove my point. So, yeah. Even so. the videos, like there was one uh, UFO that was caught i think it was like new jersey or something like that it was a blimp okay. and i i looked at it for two seconds i'm like it's a blimp and you saw this video just blowing up going oh my god this is a great video yeah i love seeing stuff like that. i'm like you can't tell that's a blimp it took me three seconds and i've never seen a blimp in my life except tv mm -hmm. yeah. come on <laughs> uh, so this thing in Miami, you know, you probably thought that's going to... Did you see what happened? They said there was a um, a fight between a group of, of teenagers with sticks and, like, like a couple hundred cop cars showed up and black helicopters and stuff. And they they, they have... They said there was these 10-foot uh, creatures walking around. And everybody... They, they were shooting at and everything, the um, people. Did you hear anything about that? Um, there, there's a there, there's a technical term for that. Okay. Yeah. The term was caca. caca. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it was nonsense. A okay. friend of mine asked me some, about somebody that. took some terrible pictures, um, expanded them out, uh, blew it blew it up to this various uh, proportions, and then all of a sudden it was uh, they they created a story around it. Okay. A That's friend of mine asked that. I was like, first question is, if you, if people are taking these videos and these pictures, mm -hmm. why isn't there anything so clear? Why mm -hmm. is the news actually showing these awful videos? And they couldn't say that. Okay. Because I mean, I'm curious it's, it's, with it's that. Too. Clear, I believe it. Do you think the government would something like that? Think they would cover something up like that, or you think they would? Well, they did have covered through the years, but they're a little more open to it now. Well, I'm. Um, I would say that since the event never happened, mm -hmm. um, the government didn't have to do anything but let people um, think what they wanted to think. Oh yeah, man! You just tell something yeah. to a group of people, and yep. word gets out, and yeah, it's like a mass type yep. of sighting where nothing happened. And then it proves their point by them saying, "Oh no, the extraterrestrials aren't here. Look at the idiots that are that are doing this mm -hmm. and um, are blowing it up beyond proportion." And um, it it just didn't make any sense to me. Okay. They're going to try, try gonna go, you're a waste of time to even try to visit if you're doing this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're flying overhead. And what the hell is that going on down there? That's not us. Yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> Don't you just leave us alone uh, once in a while? It's just this. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'm curious. I was curious on that because I don't know what to believe. And, you know, you guys know more about this than I would. That's why I'm asking. We wouldn't but know. It, I mean, that's just common when, sense. when something doesn't make sense, mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense. This okay. Um, you, you, can, you can assume that if it's not logical, that it probably is made up by somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I said, I'm a paranormal investigator. I've been doing it for 47 years. So I know there's a lot of people making things up out there for their own and then they think they're going to be 
So it might be somebody on TikTok that wanted to get some ratings too. Sure. That made that up. Yep. Yep. It backfired on. Them. Yep. Yeah. I, I see a lot of those and I go fake, fake, fake. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Yeah. So any special country has more aliens sightings than any other. Is any typical country or just they all have the same? Well, um, since I don't have the data from the other countries, I okay. can't answer the um, oh, Okay. But I can say that um, around the United States, there seems to be more than anywhere else, but I can't be certain of it. There okay. just seems to be. Just to speculate, why do you think that that would be? It's no because border. there's a, there's a, um, there's a method, a way for people to call in and make their, make their, um, their uh, sighting reports here in the United States. And that, uh, that method and as many methods as there are in the United States don't exist in every country. So the numbers seem to be more in the United States. So it's not just that they're, they're visiting more here. It's just I don't, more. I don't. I don't think they are. Um, they they really have to be um, uh, determining whether we as a population are um, worthy of them showing up. Have we um, ascended to the point that we're ready for them? Well, maybe not yet, but they have to determine that worldwide. They can't just determine it in the Midwest. It has to be worldwide. So they have to be everywhere. Well, could it be that because the United States have every nationality in the world in it, in one Pacific, one spot? Because, you know, you go to Russia, of course you have all the nationalities, but the United States has everybody. Every, there's, a, there's a representative of every country in the world in the United States. Do you think mm -hmm. that's like their cesspool of you, let's go in there and see what they got. And, you know, so they don't have to go all these other places. They can just stay in one location? No, they're, they're going all over. No, no, they, they have to be everywhere. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I thought maybe because we have more representation of the world in one little spot, so they could just do all the testing here. No. Uh, every, every gene pool is different. Every, you know... Um, people are different, personalities are different, you know, logic, stuff like that. They have to go and look at other people. It's a must. Because mm -hmm. if, if you try to take just us, we're SOL. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got, you got that driving aspect, you know, and you got the driving aspect over there. It's a totally different realm. <laughs> you got to think of it that way. Like yeah. um, in the Antarctic and stuff, are there ever? You think I know you don't know, you know about other countries, but you would think. Would you think there would be like landing there too? Maybe get ice to drink, or you know, the other parts of the world that are not, you, you know, people that are not there. Or you know? well, um, there, there's plenty of fresh water in uh, in lakes, mm -hmm. and they can grab it at night when they can. Uh, uh, come down and stay uh, completely invisible and take what they want mm -hmm. and not have to mess with ice. Um, I don't think so. If they are at the South Pole, it's because uh, previously a um, very advanced civilization lived there, and that's what's bringing them there. That's interesting. Yeah. Um. A while ago, Ufi had said, Tom, your, your opinion would imply that they are subject to the same laws of thermodynamics science knows. And she asked, what if instead of moving really fast, they are cloaking and the apparent speed is an artifact of engaging the cloaking technology? Hmm. 
Well, um, uh, what I was referring to back then is that if they did not create an energy bubble around their craft, then they would be um, um, they would be uh, um, susceptible to every one of our physics rules. But since they create that, they create their own gravity inside. And they do whatever they want to do in the in the uh, in the um, in the atmosphere, and nothing bothers them. Hmm. Very interesting. That is. I wish I could cloak. Me too. Oh no, yeah. Oh yeah. That that'd be great. <laughs> Here, not. Did you, see, did you not, see the new uh, the video that's from? I think it was Japan that some company or some guy, I can't remember, uh, created this film that actually does a cloaking thing. Really? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's maybe three feet high, four feet high, something like that. And he literally had it, you know, straight forward. And you can see the guy's legs. And they turned it like this, and he disappeared. So oh, wow. Fabric. So I don't know. Yeah. Um, they're, yeah, they're experimenting with all kinds of things like that. Um, what they're actually doing is looking at what's behind the person, and that is being transposed onto this device they have in front of them. So effectively, you're looking at the device, which is looking behind them. So he goes away, and all you see is what's behind him. Now, that's not really cloaking because he's really going to be there to someone looking from a different direction. Okay. Right? So you got that completely around him. If you got that completely around him, nobody could see him then. Uh, if he could do that, but then it'd have to have 360 degrees mm -hmm. of um, and what that person would be uh, looking at in whatever angle it is around that person. He'd have to see what's on the other side of him, 360 degrees around him. No. Then that would just be just not, not possible. That's probably another 100 years right there. Or is it possible that it's like turning into a dimension? Yes, that's more like likely. Yeah, mm -hmm. he, uh, they, they uh, um, um, transition into the fourth fifth, whatever the number is, dimension, and um, then they are no longer visible to us. Hmm. Have you guys ever come across anybody that had been abducted? Because we had a guest on that actually said uh, he wake up and he have scars on his body yeah. that wasn't, you know, but it was healed. And yeah. he didn't have it the night before. Yeah. Um, I, I woke up with a black eye. The whole side of my face was black. Really? Tom, were yeah. you at the bar again? <laughs> no. He's dancing. No. no. Uh, yeah, th okay. this was, uh, uh, I, I just went to bed at night. Everything was normal. I had one of my typical dreams and then woke up in the morning with half of my face black. And by one o'clock in the afternoon, it was gone. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff like that doesn't heal that quick. No, no, it takes days. Yeah. Yeah, it turns, it turns all different colors before yep. it heals. Yeah, yellow and purple and all kinds of things. Yeah. Do you believe it's they gone have in hours. Do they have tracking devices that they put into people? or? I've heard that. Um, um, there's one person that I interviewed who told me about the tracking device that came out of his body. Um, and uh, um, as a matter of fact, that was, um, remember I told you about the book that was written about me. It was also written about one of my good friends um, who I interviewed who had those kinds of events happen to her. And uh, she uh, she had a tracking device come out of her body and then picked it up and uh, was looking at it 
and then it absorbed into her hand. Really? Yep. So, yeah, you might want to read about that in uh, the night visitants. So it was like they didn't want anyone else to be able to see it. Well, I, I don't know what they wanted, certainly. But um, it, it was like it had its own mind, you know. Wow. And yeah. it, had, it had a desire to, to live, to exist. I have a friend that has one in the back of her um Behind her ear. Oh, yeah? Nope. Yeah. Yeah. Have they used a uh, black light or metal detector or magnet or anything to see what happens with it? Uh, she's told me that she won't touch it because it hurts when she does anything like that. That That's logical. That's what would happen. Because when you start messing with it, you move it around. It doesn't like that and creates pain around the area so that it stops you from doing what you're doing. Oh, wow. Someone else said it it's probably better off not to touch anything anyway, because sometimes it's for healing purposes. Sometimes. <laughs> what did you I'm sorry. I said, let's hope. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, um, I, I, I would say that it could very well be for healing, but it's mostly for tracking. You think the um, those devices also that they pinpoint where you are and see how all your vitals are in your body at the time? You know your blood That's pressure, maybe. or you know who knows? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Um, um, if they have, you see, we we have the technology now to use a small device and record someone's um, heart, heartbeat, uh, mm -hmm. um, respiration on something just minuscule. I mean, super tiny. And uh, we have that technology now to do that. Mm -hmm. But um, what do they have 10,000 years from now? You know, yeah. it could be multi multifaceted and be able to do just about anything. Yeah. Yeah, you could just use like an Apple Watch. Yeah. For a yeah. lot of us. Yeah, your blood, yeah, yeah. Your blood pressure. Yeah. Like that. Do all that. But, you know, with their technology, why come to Earth? They can probably sit where they are mm -hmm. and just use our satellites. Mm -hmm. Possibly. Never know. Yeah. Um, Ufi wants to know from both of you do you agree or disagree with sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic? Yeah. Oh. That's what it appears uh, to us. Absolutely. That's how we see it. And that's why um, if, if an extraterrestrial race were to um, uh, come to us, that we would think they're gods. Because they'd just be so advanced that we couldn't even imagine it. And that's what happened many, many years ago. And it could potentially happen right now until we are of a point where we're uh, advanced enough to be able to see and uh, communicate with an extraterrestrial without being in serious pain or, or um, uh, nausea or anything like that. Because right now we couldn't do it. So imagine... Um and, and I've always thought of this. Imagine if, what is it, like 75% of the world, 80% of the world, um, at least they were, uh, were Christians and they were worshiping God. Um, and then this happened where, you know, th they landed and we figured out who they were and what they were. And all of a sudden, that wasn't the case anymore. Wouldn't that be really interesting to see how things went? And you, oh, yeah. just, you described the show V. I don't watch it, but you should. I might start. <laughs> yeah, it, yep. it was like the eighties, I think it was. It was a show basically described as that. Yeah, yeah. I think I remember people that show. Were people were against it. It's mm -hmm. 
it's it would be very crazy to see how things i mean i've thought about that since i was younger because i never liked organized religion of any sort and i thought what would happen if all these people finally figured out that that was not what you know how things went but um and and i have a, a big question also so um did the aliens or extraterrestrials or whatever they like to be called because i you know i i don't know how what their pronouns are <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pronouns, yeah. Good point. yeah. Did, did they help to to build the pyramids? That's the, my first part of you know the question. And then second of all, are the pyramids part of a conduction system for electricity? Maybe. <laughs> um, maybe the they were used to. Um, um, transmit electricity throughout our entire planet, either through the ground or up through the, the sky. Um, that is possible. Um, what was your other question? Do you feel that they helped to build the pyramids? Or oh, was that um, you answer that question. How about that one? Yeah, um, I, I don't think that they built it. I think that they probably helped to build it they provided a little bit of their technology and uh, that's and they they used the workforce um that already existed on the planet to assemble it yeah you can gain those boldies up to the top of that just to just get those that material to that location you know they Okay, they, they, they try to show technology how they put these wooden, um, like, wheels or type, these, um, like, trees. They yeah. cut them and they rolled it. And then oh, they got, yeah, that's, and, and that's then stupid. And then you put stone on, you could spin it, yeah. you know, with the balance. And, the, yeah. you know, I I don't know. I, like I mean, said, that, I, I that was, might be yes. Yeah, but I can see. How are you going to lift a two-ton rock, Yeah, you know, 30 feet up in the air? Yeah, you don't have the technology now. You have these cranes. If I used to wire, I used to wire those big cranes, the skyscrapers in, in Manhattan. Right. And just to see those, you know, those that material being picked up by a crane, I'm like, no way you could get like 100 guys to lift that thing to get into one location, you know, to build it up. Because those those pyramids are kind, they're kind of high, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And how do how you put that little triangle on top of uh, the uh, parents? Mm -hmm. Carefully. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pick it up and just place it. They had they giants. Just with a um, parachute and go, ta da. Yeah. <laughs> Take a, a little guy that drops it yep. on the top. Well, one guy. So I, I really think that um, I really think that they did have something to do with it. I mean, it's really difficult to say that. I mean, there could have been millions of slaves that were working, but how do you get all of those people? I mean, like you can't get some people to like one person to work some days. How do you get millions of people to do this slaves. kind of work? Slaves. Yeah. yeah, but they. I mean, you can't round millions of people up. Slaves. You can't. You can't even get a sense of that. So to have all those people, and then to have. You know, have them figure out how to get heavy pieces of stone with, you know, pushing, pulling, how to like balance it out. I, I think it's, there had to have been something else besides mm -hmm. men. There had to yep. have been. They probably used their technology um, to levitate and move the stones and put them right into place. Because mm -hmm. you can't use, well, twine or whatever they had as rope to pull it up as an angle like this and then go up and over it's going to rip right you know however thick they can make it it'd probably be ripping but yeah. what animal is going to go up over and pull it down if it broke for an example i don't know about they that they probably go back, you know it, they can't and yeah, I, I, the ropes or whatever they had. How are they going to move tons? 
but yeah. they would have to make yeah. rope yeah. first. You know what I mean? Right. But then they, they had to have some kind of pulley system or whatever. And yeah. they, there wasn't steel back then, metal. Right. They did everything with baboon, 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 ba yeah. Well, so bamboo. That's it. That's what I said. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you, could, you know, pull it, they didn't have that that almost stuff anything. Stuff. trees like you could pull it over a tree, but you, they would have to make a rope thick enough, which yeah. it would take them. Well, the tree's not going to hold a ton, right? I don't, I don't but know what I'm saying is, you can make know. one out of anything. I'm, I'm not saying we're getting a tree in the desert. You're getting a well, tree it, in the desert. It may not have been so deserty back then, um, but um. Um, I think it was more like tropically at that point. Yeah. Okay. Then if you're if you're gonna go to that point, okay, let's make it even further. Okay. How do we get the same drawings in twenty different other locations in the pyramid, or almost exactly the same way? No boats, no planes, no telephones, no. Uh, fire making thing to make so smoke signals how is that possible yeah, that, that's the only thing that always i try to say to people how can they do that how can that happen and mm -hmm. your your theory is exactly how i explain to people if you don't believe in spirits vampires leprechauns everything else how are the how are so many people writing different stories all over the world they didn't have a telephone they didn't have anything to talk to each other and they're writing about the same things all over the world all over at the same time yep oh yeah yeah the you know, the pyramids are almost exactly the same wow. they're still finding pyramids in south america you know yeah they're, they're, they're everywhere south there's america very, and japan all, there's all very over. dense tropical forests you know in south america central america and they will find all kinds of pyramids throughout it will be forever until they you know continue to find something that is going to be all my writings that's in the inside all those different writings from different cultures and there's always somebody in those drawings Guy looks like he's wearing some kind of oxygen thing or a helmet, you know, like a like some kind of spaceman. And these are people, you know, in the pyramids. And all those drawings from way back then, the, the this in the background, there's pictures, religious drawings with those ships flying in the air, yep. you know. And back then, nobody knew. there was no frisbees that they could toss, they yeah. throw, you know. <laughs> you know, so they didn't even think about it. So how can this all be, um, you know, like you said, it had to be through them, you know, this aliens or spaceships. or There's got to be some kind of communication to make that happen. Yeah. <laughs> that's the only thing. You know, that's, that's or, it. or it was psychic or it was, you know, airmail or pigeon mail or something something yeah. had to get this to pigeon them. over you know fly them overseas yeah, yeah. The worst. send the ravens out the ravens yeah i watched too much games of thrones i guess <laughs> <laughs> i was thinking more poe but, <laughs> <laughs> but there i mean there were so many people who knew about the same types of things and if that's the case hi whoever's saying hello i don't see your name um but yeah I definitely think that te even Tesla was talking about the pyramids having, you know, conduction from with electricity. If Tesla is talking about it, there's definitely something there. And I oh, think sure. he was saying that it was through the tops of them and there's some kind of gold connection with the sun. Mm. Yep. Um, there's theories about that. Yeah, I, I I think that as far as the pyramids go, the um, the conduction was uh, multifaceted. A portion of the conduction had to be connected to the ground, and the other portion of the conduction had to be connected to a a, a tower, some sort of tower that they made, which could have been another pyramid. Mm -hmm. um, 
uh, some sort of tower that, that they made, and that was their complete connection, the, the tower and the ground. And um, through that complete connection, they were able to complete the circuit and conduct electricity. It could have even been like the Nile with some kind of stone. Possibly. Maybe a help of some sort. But yeah. again, we won't know because we weren't there. No. So, right. so many. There's so many theories. And there's so many. I yeah. mean, it's not, we're not going to know. Like I said, we're not going to know everything until the day you're going to know everything. And we don't want to be there right now. Except well, I did, I did bring this up on last week show because Haiti um, Haiti's also been researching um, extraterrestrials and uh, visitations and the, the crossover of spirits. Um, I did read about how there was a tablet that was in, I don't know if it was Sumer ancient Sumerian or, you know, something like some kind of ancient script and AI was used to um, to read it. So there's a possibility that there's something out there that could be read that hasn't been yet because we're not able to, and AI may be able to, to translate. That's possible. Mm -hmm. That's possible. Um, I would like to see them turn AI loose a little bit more and to be able to do things like that, mm -hmm. but um, it's uh, it's a dangerous proposition. It is. It is. I would like to see what you know the the tablets of Toth. What they said. I'd like to see what you know the Dead Sea Scrolls had to say. There's a lot that we haven't uncovered yet, and that might reveal things that we we need to know. Mm -hmm. We may not want to know. No. <laughs> If um, we do, or if that information starts coming out, people are going to have issues. Because, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I mean, I, my first thought was religion. You know, yeah. that's all hell is going to break loose. Mm -hmm. yeah, religion is going to have a big, big problem with that because of, uh, you know, they might say, hey, wait a minute. And, you know, they listen to this AI or, some of the old records that are found, and they're going to say, you know, hey, you're interrupting here. This is what we believe. And right. now you're telling me it's not true. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I, I could see that being an issue in religion and governments too. A lot of governments don't want their people to know everything that's going on outside. Um, but as somebody who who doesn't believe in organized religion and i just believe that why not just follow the golden rule and be good to each other and do no harm just take it as it is when it gets released because it will there is enough going on within you know the churches and the things that have happened and the things that we've already revealed that have not been you know in a good place or have been negative if something does get released they have hidden that themselves and they have created this religion to be a mask for everything that has transpired and it's for a reason. So just be good to each other and follow the golden rule as it is. Why not just start there? It's going yeah. to be a problem and we know this. Just let it go Human nature. and move on. Human nature. Mm -hmm. they're, well, they're, not, is, they're not gonna let it go, that's the problem. No. Because somehow maybe, now, not even some people even believe that the Bible has changed, written 20,000 different times, you know, and they just read the same book and they're not realizing that there's other books that are being written. What if that if it's really true, the gods are really aliens mm. at the aliens? preceded a lot of these stories. Mm -hmm. well, how is that going to fall out on these religion people? All hell is going to break loose. Literally. Yes, mm -hmm. because it in the they book it says the Holy Spirit, and they will throw a, a fit saying, well, this is not nothing about, you know, ghosts or spirits or anything like that. Mm -hmm. 
but then it's coming down to um, aliens saying that this stuff happened to them. Well, there, this guy it over here is got an Egyptian fit. It already <laughs> says it says the Holy Spirit, and we're not, and people are not supposed to believe in spirits yet. There are spirits within the entire Bible, so they've already turned it around to what fits their narrative. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and there'll be more call. turning. Uh, they, they, they'll keep turning um, to make it fit their narrative until it doesn't. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is that's sad. when that's when there'll be retribution and weeping and gnashing of teeth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it won't be bras burning, it'll be books burning, correct? <laughs> and maybe some people, too. That, too, yeah, yeah, but you said that, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chris. No. Every New Testament is another version of man's interpretation, and it's exactly how they want it to fit. And it's the telephone game, like it, they keep playing the telephone game over and over again until it you know, it plays out the way they want it to play out. And people who are very literal with the interpretation of the Bible, and this shouldn't be like a religious debate or anything, but it could be, you know, the parting of the Red Seas. It could be slippage of tectonic plates. It could be anything, you know, it, it could be however it played out back in that day. It could just be fables so that people learn a lesson. We have no idea what actually transpired, but I think people need to have a, uh, and a more open mind and think outside the box because things are going to get very hairy and I think they should be a little bit more aware. And I think people are starting to be because I, I was looking to see, you know, how many people actually believe in spirits and it's like 70% now where it used to be only, I don't know, 30% and less and less people are going to church. And I know a lot of people are going to say that that's, disgusting and horrible, but I think less people have faith in, and that's a pun, which I didn't really mean it to be, but have less faith in, um, you know, the people who are leading the church or mm -hmm. the church itself or the Vatican or, you know, whomever is in charge of their local areas because of things that are happening and because of things that they're seeing mm -hmm. and they're hearing and they're starting to believe instead. And that's my piece. <laughs> yeah, she's going to stick by it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, next. That's it. Yeah. Uh, Sorry. Now, with these other planets and stuff, like Mars and stuff, they're, they're, they're finding things on there. Do you? I mean, if they're they're coming here, they must be coming from somewhere outside the galaxy, the galaxy or the universe. Who knows where they're coming from? You know, do you think they go to other, the other planets also to, you know, like a rest stop so they could urinate or something? <laughs> Uranus. <laughs> yeah, they That's why they call it that. That's the rest stop for the uh, ecological uh, travelers. So, but do you think there's like on these other planets, um, like they do land there and maybe regroup or something? Do you feel like uh, something else with that? Possibly. Um since they cannot come directly to us and land, um, because we wouldn't be very receptive at this point, mm -hmm. um, I'm sure that they have portions of their fleet parked around all kinds of varying structures, like uh, moons of Jupiter and Saturn and things like that, um, on the other side of, the, of our moon. Uh, they're all over the place. But... Um, they knew that there were humans on this planet long before we were even aware that we were human ourselves. Um, they, they knew all about it. Um, right now, we're just beginning to figure out how to uh, look at the uh, atmospheres of some of the other planets. Um, not in our solar system, but look at the atmospheres of some of the other planets and uh, determine if there's life on them just by the chemical composition. Um, 
there's no reason in the world that, uh, why we can't think that they've already been able to do that with our planets, and they knew exactly where life was. So, do you feel there was um, other life on other planets? Like, I know that they certainly show, like, Mars, you know, and also all these other planets. I know Mars for, good. I guess that's the closest to us that they could uh, refer to, mm -hmm. but they're finding um, maybe there was rivers there and stuff like that. Maybe could there have been life there, and then it ended there and came here? It, it's boy, it, it's possible. Um, there, there's no way that we would know for certain until somebody who was there, um, or there's evidence that shows it. Um, yeah. we would only be guessing, but um, I, I couldn't be too surprised if that's what they came up with that uh, we were um, on Mars, and then Mars uh, started to have big problems, and they realized that the quickest way to keep living would be to jump to this planet. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's possible. It's possible. This planet's gone. Where, where are we going? I mean, it gets a little too warm next the next planet over. Yeah, okay. we, we, we better uh, uh, <laughs> hone our skills a little bit because uh, we're going to need something else soon. Yeah, because uh, there's a little more thermal on, uh, on uh, Neptune. Yeah. You, know? you hit the lake, Anthony. Hit the lake. Yeah, we're going to hit the lake. Jump in the sea to cool down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and in 100 years, it's not going to be very much fun on this planet. Well, 100 years, we're not going to be around to even notice that. So, no. you know, might as well enjoy what we're here. You no. know, well, they Our better take care of the planet now because there won't be anything there. We got to start um, getting back to our planet. You know, guy is God is going to get our revenge. And yep. um, after that, that's, you know, we got to start giving back. We will take this, this whole race of people, of humans. So we'll just take us. We're not givers. So yep. we got to start giving back to, uh, you know, to save maybe our race in the future. Or, or maybe like in the future, like uh, somebody wrote the Terminator. Somebody's going to come back from the future and save us. Hey, you know. The uh, is coming out who, now. So who, who Anthony will be coming back. Yeah, I'll be old. Anthony's gonna save us. I'll, I'll come back from the future <laughs> with my cannolis. There you go. I, I always say <laughs> that this is a very shallow gene pool, and it's not looking any better. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> we're screwed. Wait, do you think that? I mean, I know all that technology we're getting now. And with the AI and stuff, do you think that's going to be our demise? Like it's Maybe. going to fight against us. The all the all the equipment and the technology yeah. is going to be against us. Yeah, it's possible that that's the route that it's going to go. But um, I'm hoping that we would um, we would once we release AI uh, to do what it's going to do that. Uh, we have at least some some way to turn it off because once we release it, it may just get too big and want to live and say and think that we're nonsense. We get rid of us. Mm -hmm. I mean, anything's possible. It'd be like the movie of iRobot. Yeah. iRobot, yeah. yeah. I mean, that whole scenario. So, yep. you know, there are movies out there that Terminator. have, have yeah. that premise already. Sure, Terminator. Uh, Terminator is one of them. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a you never know. Uh, the, the that that can take over. Yeah, uh, I mean, one thing about AI, it's like maybe we could send that into space on a ship one day, because that's going to last forever. Maybe we'll find another another galaxy, or you know, go beyond ours. You know, that's what's good about stuff like that. But then again, like you said, it. It might just turn around against us or more. Like I said, you have to have that back door to shut it down. Yeah. Boy, it, it could happen. It really could. And that's what makes it so scary. We've really got to uh, um, uh, take care of ourselves. Yeah. AI is super dangerous, I think. Well, do you think that the, the ships and the aliens that are coming here now, 
Um, could it be AI? Could that be an AI from another planet? Oh, sure. And they're sending that down here to check us out? Maybe Absolutely, that's what it could be. And the, um, all these other things. Maybe that's that organic. Maybe they are. That was what was in Florida. You know? Yeah. Maybe they're not organic. You know, maybe um, they are some sort of being that something that created, like a drone um, or something it, like that. Yeah, it, it said that the the, the short grays um, uh, were created by another race of beings, um, and they are uh, biological uh, robots. Okay. So, so and and they do their bidding, their their um, their uh, medical testing and things along those lines. Um, I don't know that for certain. Yeah. Um, I would love to ask somebody, but nobody is uh, offering them them themselves up for a discussion. <laughs> That's not if much you I can do about like it. that. Um, let us know. We'll have them on as a guest. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that would be interesting. That, that would be very interesting because I know yeah. our audience here would be like, "What?" You know, yeah. we would have views off the charts. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that's that, it's interesting how they think that they, uh, you know, Rick. If we got AI, they definitely got something. Maybe you know, super AI, something like that. You know, the deluxe version. <laughs> The government would, probably has something along those lines already. Yeah. So we're getting a little late here, guys. Okay. Do you have, do you have any um, books that are coming out or any uh, events that are coming up that you're going to be speaking at, either one of you or both of you? Um, uh, as far as books go, um, <clears throat> I am uh, going to be writing a book very soon with um, – with um, with the girl that I met online, who is um, who is a psychic medium, and um, it's going to be a book about God. And the reason I'm going to write a book about God is that I think that God exists, but not in the way that our our religions have taught us. Okay. Um, I think God is just, it's just too large. It, it, um, uh, God creates universes. God doesn't uh, answer our prayers about our boyfriends. You know, I mean, <laughs> it, it, it just doesn't, doesn't happen. So when, when you um, pray that you want right. to marry I never you? prayed about my boyfriend. My yeah. fact, I never had a boyfriend. Come on, Anthony, don't uh, lie. <laughs> His name is Tom, uh, Cannoli. And the yeah. cannoli. Cannoli. I pray about cannolis. The more I can get, the better it is. That I believe. <laughs> so, um, um, that's all I'm doing. Uh, uh, Tim's going to be doing a couple of things. Uh, Tim, why don't you describe that? Um, I'm playing with a book, but I'm kind of giving up on that aspect. Um, I'm just having issues with the research and all that. Um, but uh, events that I have is uh, Penhurst Asylum. Uh, nice. else, uh, May 18th and 19th, mm -hmm. um, and then Gettysburg uh, Battlefield Bash, uh, July 26th and 28th, and then Sleepy Hollow will be October 12th okay. in Sleepy Hollow, New York, and then New Jersey Para Unity, November 2nd and 3rd. I'll see you in all of them. Are you both going to be yeah, at these locations or just you, Tim? Uh, I will be most of them. Uh, Dad might come down to the New Jersey one, like he did last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's why I got to see get you on the show. Yes, <laughs> yes, I, I we talked multiple times, so it's like you know, I think we investigated one time too. Oh uh, no, I we remember. never had the privilege. I really? mean, okay. I like to. Yeah. I mean, you're not too far. No, nope, just no. tell me. I'm, I'll make a time and get down there. Yeah, to go to Shanley. Yeah, I've done that multiple times. There's a, I would love to get there. Uh, yeah, it's only been an hour, hour and a half away from uh, from Maine, so mm -hmm. close to two hours. But yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll set something up. I mean, I I always, I always like to go there. 
you know, this it's not that far. It's and it's a great location. I love that place. Yeah, we got something going there. So we go would on. never know it how many times he thinks about it or talks about it or has mentioned it here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I never mention it. Like every it. show. <laughs> you what? Not every every show. Well, I didn't I didn't bring up Ron Lourdes on this show. So with the static com. You just the did. <laughs> <laughs> Ron and Lourdes, I you throw that in there. He's here Lourdes. somewhere. I thought I saw her. Yeah, Lourdes is here. they're both probably listening right now. They stopped in. They're going to head they over tomorrow in. to uh Virginia Paracon for the weekend. Oh nice. Have a great trip, guys. We love you. Be careful. Yeah. So yeah, we decided calm you guys gotta listen to. Definitely. I I One try day. to go and do listen to uh Ron. Um at New Jersey, and I think in Gettysburg too, but my table is just, you know, sporadic yeah. and I just, I can't leave it. That's just me. I know that feeling. But it I'm is nearby, like but I'm not walking away from like, you know, his stuff and all that kind of stuff, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, the Gettysburg, they're gonna be doing it again, so. Yeah. Um, and Barry Unity, they got the booth in the back, the, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the exhibit in the back. Yeah, so I'm outside. Like I'm outside. Like one of those guys at the uh, at one of those adult entertainment things. Come on in, check this out. We got oh something in here. God. Come on in. I'm outside the room, getting everybody to pulling them in, and because uh, and then they come in and they love it. So they thank me as I leave. Like, come yep. on, I got something here. Yeah. me. <laughs> Why? I got to get them in. I promise you're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. Come on, you're gonna love this. Oh, you bribe them with something. We know. Yeah, it's like you know. Candy. I, 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 no, I, I promise them they're going to date with Ron. Oh, uh, <laughs> you could kiss Ron. Yeah, and, and Lauren's like, yeah, okay, they're in. Lauren, Lauren says, I don't care as long as they come in and listen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my so, lord. Yeah. Anything else from Maureen? I'm putting up. Uh, I was putting up all your stuff. I'm putting oh, up Tim's. I'm putting up Tim's. Okay. Information right now. Tom, do you have a um, a website or anything that has all of your information? Uh, I do not have a website, but I sent you a um, a, uh, a resume. Correct. I have that all on yeah, okay. our page. So anybody okay. that wants to look over his information, it's all there. Okay. Um, the only thing I didn't include was uh, my Facebook address. And then if somebody wants to um, wants to throw me a friend request on Facebook, it's a Facebook slash Tom dot Conwell dot three. Dot three. Yeah. Dot three, yeah, that's my address. The number three. Pardon? The number three? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah number three. How can they um, get your books? Amazon uh, and anywhere else? All through, all through Amazon, yep. Yep, this most recent book was um, a co-authored. Um, Anna Manilow uh, wrote, uh, wrote the book and uh, interviewed me extensively. And I also told her about uh, the person that I had interviewed and who had the very close encounters. Um, and uh, she also interviewed her. So it was pretty interesting, that book. It, uh, I would highly recommend that people get that book. And that's called The Night Visitants. Do you think that is if someone was going to choose just one book, is that is that the one book that you would tell them to buy? I mean, obviously buy all of them, but <laughs> well, um, it depends on what their interest is. Yeah. Uh, if it, if if they're interested in um, how the extraterrestrials may be may be uh, interfacing with us, then they're going to want to read the Night Visitants. But if they want to know how we can get to them, then they're going to want to read uh, Going Interstellar. Okay. Or the research of, you know, the map and the sightings 
you know, you got series one, two, and three. Yeah. That's all relating to the map. It's and, just, and the earthquakes and UFOs too. So yeah. are you are you got any of them in audio books? Um I'm starting no, to, I don't. I'm, I'm starting to get into it. A, He's always yeah. I, I get into it and I put it on my car and I'm driving and I'm listening listen to stories. I've been saying that for years. Well, it, here's the thing. Uh every book I've had up until the most recent one could not be put on in audio form because I included all kinds of graphs and things oh. like that. How do you describe a graph, you know? Um, and there were a lot of pictures that, that described it. It was just impossible. But you this could say latest one. Like, now here's my arm and picture it being up to my elbow. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I'd have to do. And that would be nuts. Yeah, I don't so, know. I come up like with I said, I'm getting into that. that. I, and I put it in my car and I listed. I got a couple of my friends that are doing it. And uh -huh. um, I, I got this. And I, I just listened to it as I'm driving. Yeah, yeah, okay, I, now. I've done it a couple of times with uh, certain books. Now, to so put I a book. Eyes. I can sit back and I listen to it also. To put a book in audio, um, you have to have someone who has a reasonable voice to listen to. And that's not me. And um, they're going to have to have a really good, quiet place to do hours and hours of recording. And um, uh, hours and hours of quality recording. Um, it, it's just, if, if you pay somebody, it may cost you $1,500, maybe $2,000 to pay okay. someone to wow. do it. I mean, you really? Can, yeah, yeah they do do it now with AI. You put the voice, somebody else in there, like Doc I'll Vader. Do it. Put Doc um, Vader's voice, and you can talk. That it, it's possible that that could be the road down the the um, down the way. That's possible. Mm -hmm. I'll that, do it for you for really half cool. of that. Half of it, yeah. Half half a cannoli, okay. No. Have, hey, <laughs> all cannoli or no Not cannoli? Hey, yeah. Don't <laughs> share. So I did share the other night, but hey, we only have limited. I <laughs> will enunciate perfectly. You know, no cannoli. Hey, I'm sure. You can give Anthony my cannoli. I, I got to go on investigation now that they bring me cannolis. That's cool. <laughs> uh, I, I still appreciate Todd and Camille. Camilla. Listen. You're not going to fit in your forget about it shirt after the cannoli. You got, my brother got me one for uh, for my for Christmas. That's See, a new one. I'm getting so big, they can't put in one word no more. They got to put two <laughs> separate words. <laughs> the, the ETs aren't going to be able to take you. That's They're going to drag you along. I think if I stay heavy and, you know, they can't pick me up. Look at those little oh, No, can't no you. Yeah. They're little skinny things. How are they going to pick me up? So take like ten of them. Well, One of the dreams up. I had had uh, two Native Americans come into my bedroom and reach over with wands. They had these wands in their hand, and oh, yeah. they reach over and touch me with their wand, and bloop, up I went, levitating. Oh wow! Oh yeah, and that's in that that's in my latest book. Well, they're going to need more than two wands for me. No, I don't think like so. Four or five ones that lift me. Do you do you feel that you've had past lives as um, Native American? Yes, I think so too. I have an Indian that's an um, that's a spiritual guide. Spirit guide. I was He's my about warrior. That was an Indian warrior. My um, husband, my husband was as well. He has a ton of war clubs and all kinds of things in the basement and he's very much in tune with that. So mm -hmm. it's weird because all of you have something with that. Yeah. yeah. Pow powwows are big for me. I've been to a couple of them and it's just like, I feel safe drawn. and drawn. Mm -hmm. So I, I watched them on Facebook and it just like, now I know why. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I usually bring in um, the, I can't. I can't think of his name. Young Coyote. Young Coyote. 
<laughs> no, my, my guy, and oh. saying, this is for you. And I'll I'll smell um, tobacco every once in a while mm -hmm. if I play. And I'm like, all right, just want to know, you know, acknowledge you, and it's there. Mm -hmm. Do do you guys have any um, Native American in your background? No. So the family that we were born into did not have Native American ties. But my soul probably did in a past life. Somewhere, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, you know, like I said, I, I a psychic pool told me one time they I'm walking in and they just turned me around and said, You were an Indian warrior in a past life. I'm like I was, you know, and I and I just got a tattoo on my arm and, and my arm wasn't showing. And it's Tony it's Chief head. Hmm. I had this on my arm. And but I was like, and they didn't know it because it was covered with a shirt. So hmm. I was always into that. So but his spirit animal's also a wolf. Wolf. Yeah, my spirit animal is a wolf. Mm -hmm. And that's connected as well. Yeah. No. So yeah, so that's why you if you're if you're very if you feel very connected, that would be why, because it would have been a past life thing. And I think that you I don't think it was a reverse role for you or it's the same role. I think it was something within your culture. Um, I think, Tom, I think that you were probably the chief, but you had a peaceful um, you had a peaceful tribe. It wasn't like a a warring kind of tribe. And I think, Tim, that you were something For sure. a little bit lower. I, I don't know what it would be called. It would be like a lower... A healer? Probably. Shaman. I, Shaman. I've been told that I've been a priest in my oh. past day, that might have transferred down further. And I'm like, priest? Yeah, not me. <laughs> I don't know where that's going to be happening in my life now, but yeah, that has all kinds of connotations uh, that aren't <laughs> aren't what you think religiously. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that could be the case. I mean, it, ne it didn't necessarily need to be like a positive thing. Right. Mm. So. That's interesting. That's really interesting. Well, guys, we don't want to keep you any longer. And Bobby has a show at 10. Thank you okay. so much for being with us. This was super, super interesting. Like this is a couple of shows that we've had extraterrestrial ties and it, it didn't, it wasn't supposed to be this way. Um, yes, Ufi, I do have um, spirit guides. We all get four of them when we come into this world, we choose them ourselves. And then we have an umbrella guide that's kind of like the boss of them. And then we do also have um, animal guides as well. Mine is a white tiger. Um, but we thank you so much for being with us. And um, the, the uh, information is like mind blowing. And I'm probably going to lay in bed and stare at the ceiling all night. Yep. You know, wondering what more I can ask yep. you after this. <laughs> so <laughs> you might hear me after this. Mm -hmm. um, I sent you a friend request on Facebook. Yes, I I'm, got it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I make lots of, lots of different postings about extraterrestrials on my Facebook page. So. I'm so glad to know that. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm yeah. literally like there's a million things spinning through my head right now. I can't even think. But mm -hmm. um, everybody yeah. is really excited to have you tonight. And um, the the questions were just coming, and I couldn't even keep up with them. But um, mm. thank you again for being with us. We'd love to have you back sometime. I'm and and glad yes. to. So this is. I'm sorry. I'll be seeing you, Tom. Uh, Tim. Um, I'll be seeing you oh. at those barricades. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, the both of you. I mean, that'd be great. Go ahead, Maureen. Now you're about to do your little okay. bit. So this is another episode of Dimensions of the Supernatural every Thursday, 7.30 to 9.30 Eastern Standard Time, p.m. that is. Uh, we will see you next week, same time, same place. I'm Maureen Grudzinski, otherwise known as a Little Witchy, with my co-host, Anthony Simonelli. Just forget about it. I just want to. I just want to say, you want to be safe out there. You want to look for ghosts, not be a ghost. And there's another thing: ghosts and cannolis go very good together. Yes. Okay. Forget about it. Ciao. Good night. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs>